Okay, let's look at question 7, an electrostatics um, question from the November 2019 matric past paper. So here we've got a small sphere Y carrying an unknown charge is suspended at the end of a light inextensible string which is attached to a fixed point. Another sphere X carrying a charge of plus 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs on an insulated stand is brought close to sphere Y. Sphere Y experiences an electrostatic force and comes to rest 0,2 meters away from sphere X with the string at an angle of 10 degrees with the vertical as shown in the diagram. What is the nature of the charge on sphere Y? Choose from positive or negative. Well, sphere X is positive and sphere Y was repelled. So like charges repel, so it must be positive. Now it says to you, calculate the magnitude of the charge on sphere Y if the magnitude of the electrostatic force acting is 3,05 newtons. So obviously here we're going to just use this formula here. Okay, F equals KQ1, Q2 over R squared. The difference here is that we know what F is. And so F is 3,05, which is going to be equal to K. Come back here. K. Why is this doing this? K and then Q. We don't know Q1, okay? So Q sub Y we don't know. But we do know this other Q sub X because it is 6 times 10 to the negative 6, okay? And then this is all over, you remember I can't do fractions, this is all over r squared, which is 0, 0,2 squared. So now you're left with an equation with one unknown. So if you get out your calculator and you do the sums on your calculator, you should end up with something like, what are we, not f, we're finding q. Q sub Y is going to be equal to 2 comma 2 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs because it is a charge so no unit no mark okay now it says to you draw a labeled free body diagram for sphere Y so if you look at sphere Y first of all this is three marks the first one that we're going to put in on this free body diagram is very obvious. We're going to put in T. Okay, let's make this a nice fat line if we can. Oopsie, but fat. I'm going the wrong way. Okay, so there is going to be T, so label this T. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put in another force. The electrostatic force, so the electrostatic force, these were being repelled, so Q has been pushed this way. So this one's going to be F sub E, okay. So there's T, there's F sub E, and what is my third force? This thing has a mass, so everything with a mass, the mass acts downwards to the center of the earth. So here will be FG or if you prefer, you can call it W. Okay, so there's my force diagram. So you need a label on each of those. I can't put the label in very easily here, but you can go from there. Now it says calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. So here is the tension. Okay, so this tension, it has a vertical component and it has a horizontal component. So the vertical component will be equal to the weight acting downwards and the horizontal component of the tension in the string is going to be equal to the electrostatic force. So we should write that down. Okay, so actually what we need to say, the system is in equilibrium. So we say F net equals zero because the system is in equilibrium. And then what we have to do is we have to say the force that is electrostatic Okay, F sub E is equal to ay, this stupid thing is equal to the X component of the tension. So it's actually T 
x, okay? So if we want to put Tx, or we know the electrostatic force at this point actually, because it's in the question, the electrostatic force was 3,05 newtons. So 3,05 is going to be equal to T, and it's the x component, so it's the cos of the horizontal angle. So it's T cos 80 or T sine 10 if you want to do it the other way. Okay. Remember if the angle's from the vertical you um, switch the switch the sine and cos. And so if you do things in your calculator you should come up with 17,56 newtons. And because it only asked you for the magnitude, you don't actually have to um, state a direction. Okay, so, but it would be up the string if you wanted to state a direction, if we don't want to work out theta. Now it says to you, two small charged spheres A and B on insulated stands with charges plus two, 2 times 10 to the negative five and minus four times 10 to the negative five are placed 0,4 meters apart, as shown in the diagram below. M is the midpoint. So if this is the midpoint, we're going to split this 0,4 into 2. So this is going to be 0,2 and 0,2. Define the term electrical field at a point. The electrical field at a point is the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. This memo clearly states if unit is omitted in this definition, then zero marks. Please be very careful with your definitions. Now it says to you, calculate the net electrical field at point M. So when we calculate the field, we must use the field formula. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. You can calculate the net force and turn it into a field. Okay, but it's way, way better just to use this formula, the field. Okay. The field equals E equals KQ over R squared. So what we have to do now, first of all, there's a field from A and there's a field from B. So to calculate the net field, we have to know what is A doing at M, what is B doing at M, and then to find the net, to find the net, we have to add them together, obviously assuming a direction. So using this formula, first of all, we're going to go for A on M, okay? So for A on M, E is going to be 9 times 10 to the negative 9, okay, which is K. And then the Q for this, the Q for this is going to be, this is A, yes, okay? And this is all over r squared. Remember the r is only from here to here, so it's comma two squared. And if you work this out in your calculator, uh, you should get four comma five times 10 to the negative six newtons per coulomb. Okay, I'm not writing newtons per coulomb because it's a thundering nuisance. Okay, so, now we need to go and look at what is B doing to M. So for B on M, it's going to be E, write the formula again, E equals KQ over R squared. So I'm just going to copy this because basically everything's the same except for the charge Q. Okay. So what is this charge Q? It is minus four. Okay, now we're not actually supposed to put the uh, signs into this calculation. We're supposed to put in the absolute value and then work out the direction from that. Okay, so first of all, let's put this in our calculator. Uh, this is not 10 to the negative six. This is 10 to the positive six. And you end up with this here, nine times 10 to the positive six newtons per coulomb. Okay, so why have I got an E with a, why is this 9 times, this is 9 times 10 to the positive 9, oh no, terrible, terrible, this is not good, this is not 9 times 10 to the negative 9, it's 9 times 10 to the positive 9, yes, 
Okay, so this is why this comes out to be a positive um, power. Sorry for the bad typing. Okay, so we've got A on M, we've got B on M. So the net electrical field is going to be when we add these together. But before we add these together, we need to first check something, okay? The electrical field at a point is per unit positive charge. So at M, what is A going to do? A is positive. So if M is positive, because it's per unit positive charge, if A is positive and M is positive, where is it going to want M to go? It's going to want M to go that way, okay? So then this is for A. Then we say to ourselves, what's going to happen with B? If we're at M and we're positive, B is negative. So unlike charges, attract, which way will M want to move a unit positive charge placed there? It will want to move this way as well. Okay. So both of these values for field are going to the right, okay, or towards B is more exact because we don't know where these are. So these are both towards B. So if towards B is positive, these will both have the same sign. So the net electrical field is going to be the field for A plus the field for B. Okay, so the net field is going to be this value plus this value, okay, which should give you, which should give you 4.5 plus 9 is 13.5 times 10 to the power of 6, and yes, now we must write it in because it's our final answer, 10 to the power of 6 newtons per coulomb. And then this is a vector, so we have a magnitude, we have a unit, we must now give a direction, and we say towards B or to the right. And there we go, that is the end of this question.